All right, man, we are in the book of the Revelation. And so you got a book, uh, Revelation chapter 1. We're going to be working through it. Now, before we get there, I'm just going to talk to you about a couple of things so that we can we can understand. But it's a, it, the book is amazing. Uh, and listen, I don't know if you read this or not, but there's blessing involved. Listen, this, this book tells us about blessings at the beginning of the book, and it tells us about blessings at the end of the book. But I am going to read this before we jump into some other things. It says this. Let's just read it together. I mean, don't read it out loud. But And so the heavens and the earth were completed. Oh, I'm in the wrong place. Let me get up here. Um, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his servant John, who testified the word of God and the testimony of Christ Jesus, everything he saw. Now listen to this and listen carefully. Blessed is the one who reads. Blessed is the one who hears the words of the prophecy and the, and keeps the things which are written in it for the time is near. And there's a blessing for reading it. There's a blessing for hearing it. And there's a blessing for tending to what it says, right? As we understand some things that he's calling us to do in action, there's a blessing that comes our way with this. This is a this is a crazy book. It, it doesn't say that. Not many of these scriptures in here are that way. Now, we know there is a blessing in the Word because the Word is, is a blessing to us. But the reality of that is just amazing to me. So if we read it, which we are, and we keep it, and we are we hear it and we keep it, uh, we, have, we have great blessing. Now, this book literally is the bookend. Um, so if we, if we look at Genesis, we do realize that uh, it is the beginning of the... Uh, it, 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 it's the beginning of creation. Here we're seeing the end of it, the consummation. So one of them was the art of creating this world. And then and so we, we saw that. I'm going to read it to you in a minute. And then now we're seeing the consummation of that. So we know that there's a trouble that went on. Now, if we were to look at the scriptures total together, we can break it down uh, in a way that makes sense to us. Because sometimes this can be a little overwhelming, right? This wasn't one book written. This is not the way it happened. These were letters and uh, prophecies and other things that were written down about what took place, and they were collected. Now, when Jesus showed up on the scene, all of the Old Testament was just as it is today. They were in scrolls, and they were in the synagogues, and you would pull a scroll out, and it would be one of the books of the Scriptures. They were in the same order that we have them today. The only difference was they had Samuel, not first and second Samuel, right? And so they had some things like that. And then Luke, about 35 years after Jesus had already ascended, uh, wrote the, the Acts of the Apostles. And then uh, and they wrote their Gospels. So Mark, Matthew, and Luke wrote Gospels. John wrote one, right? And so they began to be compiled because in those days, so when Paul wrote a letter to Ephesus, he's like, hey, have this thing read in Laodicea when you finish with it. And so these were circulatory letters. No one expected them to end up in some, some book, right? This, is, this was not what was taking place. But as persecution began to hit the church, about 300 AD, they began to see a need for collecting books that were true. Because guys were out there writing fantasies. If you've read the gospel according to Thomas, it's bizarre. And, and there's no truth in it because it doesn't line up with others. And so they were like, nope, that book doesn't make it. Now, so it's not like men put this book together in one sense, but God did use men to give us this book. We have other books. There's the book of Enoch that is mentioned in here uh, that people read. Now, it's not in here. Does it mean it's not the word of God? I don't know how you see it, but I'm not saying it's not, but it's not in here. Uh, now, there are a lot of people who are, would argue over that. I just want us to hear a concise understanding of this. So as we jump into this, this book, it, it does have a flow. Uh, so there is creation. We see that in Genesis. There was a crisis that took place in Genesis chapter 3. Sin entered the world, and it got dark, and it got lifeless, and it got lustful and selfish. And so we see that that's taking place. And so... Then there was a call. God decided he, he was going to spare his people, right? They got so bad that uh, in Noah's day, he's looking around going, man, I'm sorry I made, I'm sorry I made man. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give him 120 days to repent, and then he destroyed the place, right? The flood. 
left one family, Noah and his sons. From Noah and his sons, it's at some point down that line, a man named Abraham showed up. And God said, I'm going to take you, Abraham, and I'll make of you a great nation. And out of your loins, will be you will be a blessing to the nations. And so in there, we hear that there was a call, and God said, I'm going to fix the mess. And there's going to be a redeemer. And so you can see that call. And so then there were some uh, some commandments that took place, right? And there was communication. God was communicating with us. He spoke to Moses. Moses wrote uh, words. He came down the mountain. He, ex he explained it to the people. We can read all this. I want you to put personalization to what's taking place. And so Moses is having conversation with God, and then he's explaining what God said to the people. If you do this, you're blessed. If you don't, you're cursed. And we see this going on, right? And, and then, then there was more communication that took place because they weren't doing what they should, right? And so there were prophets that were sent saying it'd be a good idea if you heeded what God said. And there were poets that came along uh, like, like Solomon and David who wrote Psalms and, and the Song of Solomon. And, and so you see that through there. And then there was what we call Christ that showed up. The, the Redeemer did actually show up. And you find that in the Gospels. And then you find community took place, that he, that he said, I'm going to create a church. And so we have community. And the letters that we read in the New Testament are all about that. And then we get to the book that we're going to look at today, and it's the consummation of everything. It's yet to happen. But the Bible says it's soon near. And so we're going to look at that today. Um, and so that's how this thing is broken down. But if we read Genesis, we see it from the beginning. And I'm going to read that to you. It's in Genesis chapter 2. And I'm just going to read the chapter. It says, And so the heavens and the earth were completed. Now chapter 1, he gave us the very, he drilled down and told us what happened day 1, day 2, right? We saw that. Then he says, And all of their heavenly lights, by the seventh day, God completed his work, which he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because on it, he rested from all the work which God had created and made. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, the day that the Lord God made heaven and earth. Now, no shrub of the field was yet on the earth, and no plant of the field had yet sprouted, for the Lord God had not sent rain upon the earth. So it's ready. So people ask, you know, wonder, well, how, man, how, y'all act like this earth hadn't been here, but like 10,000 years or whatever. Well, Adam, when he showed up, didn't, didn't show up as a baby. He showed up as a man, right? When he looked around and started picking fruit off the vine, it, had, it may have been there only a day, but it looked like it had been there for a long time. So we don't have any problem with someone going, this, year, this, this earth is thousand millions of years old. Okay, I mean, if that's what you think. But, but there's such a thing as, as how God can take it, make, even though it's an early earth, have the effect of an older earth. And this is what took place. It says, and so they cultivated the ground, but a mist used to rise from the earth and water the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into it his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living person. And the Lord God planted a garden toward the east in Eden, and there he placed the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord caused every tree to grow that is pleasing to the sight and good for food. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now a river flowed from out of Eden to water the garden, and from there divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is Pison. It flows around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. The gold of that land is good. The Bedlam and the Ox stones are there as well. The name of the second river is Gihon. It flows around the whole land of Cush. The name of the third river is the Tigris. It flows east uh, of Assyria, and the fourth river is the Euphrates. Then the Lord God took man and put him in the garden of Eden to cultivate and tend to it. The Lord commanded the man, saying, From every tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For on the day that you eat from it, you will surely die. Then the Lord God said, Man, it's not good for man to be alone. I'll make a helper for him, suitable to him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call him. Whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the sky and to every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon man, and he slept. And then he took one of his ribs and closed up the rest, the flesh at that place. And the Lord God fashioned into it a woman from the rib which he had taken from man and brought her to the man. And then he said, 
At last, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife are both naked and they were not ashamed. And so we created this beautiful world. And all of, there's no sin involved. It's just gorgeous. Man, woman, in the, in the raw and in the real, and they're just living life. Now we know what happened. Satan came in. And, and created uh, an opportunity for Eve to sin. And when she chose to eat that fruit, they died. And they didn't die physically, but their body transformed because it was an incorruptible body. And at this point now, the body begins to break down. You got trouble in your body? I, I kind of got a little bit going on here. You know, some of this stuff is just the, the fall. It's what happens. And so we see that it has this devastating effect. And it happens as on mankind. And you can see that our world is still dark. Right? There are people out there that don't know truth. In fact, they're making up stuff that's as bizarre as you, you can imagine. Man, if you'd have told me 30 years ago people were going to have a confusion of what actually a woman is and who is and what isn't, I would have thought you're crazy. But it's gotten bizarre, has it not? And so, and we're expected then to believe that what people are telling us is a lie. We're supposed to go along with it. And I had a book when I was a kid called The Emperor's New Clothes. And I feel like we're, re we're in that situation, right? The emperor was naked and everybody was trying to act like he wasn't because he was king. And so everybody's talking about his beautiful clothes. But there's one little kid that's going, I think he's naked. Pretty sure he's naked, right? Yeah, and I'm like, th there's one person that actually had the, you know, was brave enough to go, no, no, I ain't buying this game. And, and that's what God has called you and me to be. And so we're not doing it in an antagonistic way, but we need to speak truth. Because that's all we, we are the people of light. Remove us, and there's only darkness. And that darkness is going to get dark. It's going to get darker. And then, and then you're, you and me are the only ones who are life. In us, we have the Spirit of Christ. Are you getting this? He lives within me. He is energizing me. He is the one who gives me the thoughts that I ought to have. He's the one that gives me the power that I need. He's the one that gives me everything I need for this life and the one to come. And so we should look differently than the world because we're, we're alive. I know people think it's bizarre that I'm like, I'm good with, with the leg and, and you've gone through some same things. And you're just like, it, it's not us. It's because we're, we're alive. That's, that's the difference, right? I'm alive. I've got a king. I, 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 know, I, I know this isn't all there is. And then he also, in that day, uh, love was gone. They became selfish. They were naked and they knew, and, and, and so they knew it. And they focused on themselves. And so you see a world full of just lust and selfishness. And it's coming out. Yeah, our, our whole society is filled with pedophilia. Doesn't it feel like it? Like a bunch of sick, perverted people walking around. And, and we were told it wasn't, but now we see it is. And, and this is what darkness and light does. And I don't mean this in any political way at all. There's darkness in every political <laughs> corner that you can find. It's everywhere. For where Christ is not, there is darkness and there is death. And there is uh, selfishness. And that's what we see. Now, it will culminate at the end. I'm getting there. But it will culminate at the end of where we're going. And so this is what we've been looking at. So Genesis brought us the creation of everything. And this book that we're about to open tells me how it's going to end. And so this is why it's important that, that, we, that we read this. And so let's, um, let's jump into it. Let's just get at it. Uh, it this shouldn't be a long message today. I say that why but you know i'm trying let's just read it and slowly walk through it i'm really just going to walk casually through it with you more devotional than anything else the revelation of jesus christ now revelation that term is the word we get the word apocalypse that's what that word is apocalypse if you read if you see the, the movies and all that about it it looks like this crazy destruction apocalypse means a revealing that's all it means it could be a good revealing for us i see this as good uh for others, you could see it as bad, but it's the apocalypse is what is that word that's used there. And it means there is a revealing of Jesus Christ, of the culmination of everything that's going to take place. Because the story is about him. The whole book of the scriptures, you see Jesus in, in this whole thing. Everything about the scriptures is to point us to Jesus. And so from creation to where we are is about Jesus. He's not done. He is king. He is Lord. He is coming. We are his people. We are his children. We are his brothers and sisters in Christ. We are his bride. He's preparing a room for us. There's a lot of miles to go before we get to that place, but there's going to come a place when we land there will be a new heaven and a new earth, and there will be no need for light 
because God himself will be that. There will be no need for rivers, for God, for from the throne flows this river of life that, that has within that river the opportunity to grow these trees whose fruit produces not seasonally, but but monthly. And so it's just this place of incredible vegetation. And there is a house there. And in that house, there is a, there's a room for you. And, and it's, it's been planned there. And he's got work for us to do in his kingdom to rule it and to reign with him and to be about the business of creating what creation was to be like. But there's a lot of rebellion that's going to take place before it gets there. And there, the whole world doesn't want him. So this is, this is what we're seeing, and this is what's going on. But let's see how this revelation gets where it gets. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his bondservants, the thing which m must soon take place. God reveals to, to Jesus the end game. I know you're going to lay mad. He's God. How does he not know? Yeah, let's don't do that. Okay. Uh, they're, they're, they're three in one. Jesus had laid aside his attributes, and so that's why he did what the Father had told him to do when he lived on this earth. And so in the form in which John is writing, he still sees Jesus as that man on earth. And so God is explaining to Jesus this revelation, who in turn then will show it to his bondservants. Now, John is a bondservant. Those who are still living are bondservants. By this time that John writes this, Peter's uh, been crucified upside down. Paul has had his head chopped off. Almost every other of the 12, they're dead by now. John is the oldest one who lived. He, uh, this is 90 A.D. So 33 A.D. Jesus uh, was, was crucified. And, and then um, in, in uh, about 65 A.D., most of the books of the scriptures had been written. In 70 A.D., Rome came in, destroyed the temple, destroyed everything, obliterated the Jews, and the landscape changed completely. And so those who, and, and so Nero is now dead. Domitian, who's not much better, is now on the throne. And he did not like what John was doing on the Isle of, on, on, in Asia. Now, the seven churches in here are dotted around in what we would call Turkey today. And so that's where these seven churches are. And uh, Paul planted churches in those areas. John is now pastoring all of those churches. They didn't like him speaking the good word, and so they decided to, to kill him too. And history tells us that they uh, tried to boil him in oil. John, as a 90-year-old man, uh, just didn't decide to go out that way. And God was gracious, I guess, in that sense, and it didn't work. So what do you do with a guy that you can't boil to death? You put him on an island to keep him away and shut him up. So I have no idea what John must have looked like on that island. If, he, if his skin looked like just who knows what. But, but all I know is he's on that island, he's in a cave, and he's got some friends that attend to him, and he's writing this letter to us. And so he's a 90-year-old man. It's 90 AD. All of the apostles are gone, but, but there are the bond servants, those whom the apostles led to Christ, right? And, and they're still living. And they will endure the persecution of Nero and Domitian and all of those, and they will share the, the gospel of Christ and, and, and we will hear that gospel of Christ. And so at some point, it jumped the ocean from Europe to us. And I don't know how you heard it, but I had a lady named Miss Parker and Doris Matthews that shared the gospel with me when I was nine years old, and I received that gospel. And she heard that gospel from somebody else who heard it from somebody else who heard it from one of the 12 eventually is where that thing came from. I want us to see the connection to this. And so he says this, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave to him to show his bondservants the things which must soon take place. And he sent and communicated it by his angel to his bondservant, John, who testified to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, everything that he saw. Blessed is the one who reads. And so those who hear the words of the prophecy and keep the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Now, that's the soon coming, all right? Now, let's talk about that, right? If, if it was 90 AD, we're at 2024. That doesn't sound very soon to me. And so um, the, the word there is the word tacos, which if you drive cars and you know something about some of the, the gauges on there, you'll see a tachometer. 
It simply tells you your speed or your velocity. And so when he says soon, it doesn't necessarily mean tomorrow. It's like what we tell a kid when we're riding down the road, and they how much longer, right? You know, and, and so it used to be in a minute or, you know, whatever. I would say, oh, next curve, right? And then they would ask me, oh, next curve. And they finally realized, daddy ain't telling the truth. I'll just shut up, right? So soon doesn't necessarily mean soon in that sense. And, and we know that because we know what the scriptures teach. Um, Peter, when Peter wrote his book, uh, he says in 1 Peter chapter 4, the first letter, he wrote it to this church that was scattered. Okay, they're gone. They're, they're scattered everywhere uh, because of the persecution that took place. And so he's writing a letter and he says this, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. Now, he writes a second letter and he's got people talking about his people are getting beat up out there. They're going, I thought you said the king's coming back. Yeah, it's been forever. Well, listen to what he says. Know this, first of all, Second, uh, Second Peter chapter 3. Know this, first of all, that in the last days, mockers will come with their mocking, following after their own lust and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue just as they were from the beginning of creation. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago and the earth was formed out of water by water, through which the world at that time was destroyed by being flooded with water. But by his word, the present heavens and the earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not let this one fact escape your notice. Beloved, that the Lord with the Lord one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not willing that any should perish for all to come to repentance. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful for the word soon there. doesn't mean what we think it means, or you and I would have been somehow left out of this whole thing. The fact that he's not willing that any should perish means that, that he was waiting on some of us to make it to this place, to hear the gospel of Christ, to embrace that, that we wouldn't perish, right? This is this is the loving, gracious God, and I don't want us to miss that. And so now we go back to Revelation, and he begins to tell us uh, what's going on. John, so this is the Revelation. This is what it is. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come. And from the seven spirits, who are before the seven thrones. And so this is, this is what we see. Now, the seven churches uh, are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And they're, they're real churches. Um, so uh, come on in, my friend. They're, they're real. These are real churches. You have some people who think that when John starts writing about Laodicea, that he's writing about a season in time. That's just garbage. These are letters to seven churches who are actual churches living at that time. And so, so this is where he is. Now let's just keep reading this. This is John to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace and peace to you from him who was, I mean who is, and who was, and who is to come. That's a powerful phrase. You know what that means? He's, he's omnipresent. He's omniscient. There's no end. There's no beginning and there's no end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. What we're getting here is that he's large and in charge. That, that's really what it is. Like, he, he is. Oh, and he was. Oh, and he will be. He ain't done yet. And so this is what we're getting. It says, and from, oh, and from the seven spirits who are uh, before his throne. So let's just talk about those spirits. I'm going to read it to you because he he's really quoting or, or mentioning to us in, um, let me get to it. I'm old and slow here with my, uh, my, my, my crutches and everything. This is, this is it. This, these are the, you wonder, what are the seven spirits? It's really the, the encapsulation of the role of the Holy Spirit, but we see there are seven spirits in, pass, in, in, encapsulated in that. And listen to what it says. Then the shoot will spring up from the stem of Jesse and a branch from his roots and will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. So what are these seven spirits? One of them is the spirit of the Lord. Right? The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Wisdom. That's the second one. The Spirit of Understanding. The Spirit of Counsel. The Spirit of Strength. The Spirit of Knowledge. The Spirit of Fear. 
So those are the seven spirits. And and man, if we could if we could just experience this throne room, there's a throne in the middle of this place, and there are 24 chairs in there, and there's 12 that are of the nations and tribes of Judah, and there are 12 for the apostles, and and it circles that throne. And there's four beasts in the middle. We'll look at this later, but there are four beasts in the middle of that. And, and they pre- they're, they're, the, they're the choir leaders in that sense. And when they begin to cry out, then, then those in the thrones cry out, and the angels join in. And it's this incredible, John is caught up into that. We're going to look at it in a minute. I mean, not today, but we're going to get there. Where he's caught up, and he's, he's, like, he's like seeing all of this. So in that place are these seven spirits. And so, it's, it's, listen, it's like another, you, you can't, make that thing in Hollywood. This isn't, you know, think of all the fantasy movies that you've seen. There's nothing like this throne room of heaven. That's where everything happens. That's where when you pray, because it says that there is in that place, there's a bowl of incense. A bowl of incense. It's every prayer that you pray. This is why we pray. Because however it ends up, I'm praying right now, and it fills that bowl of incense in the throne room of heaven. Don't miss this. And that aroma fills that place. And God, as he, as he smells that aroma, and however it moves from that to words, he knows that his, one of his children just cried out to him. He snaps his fingers, and one of the angels comes forward, and he says, here's what I need you to do. Right? We know this, don't we? He, he says this, that, that they're ministering spirits meant, meant to serve us. And so, so this is what they do. This is what happened to Daniel when Daniel's crying out, trying to figure out, Make sense of things. Gabriel comes and stands before him, worn out with a sword in his hand, going, hey, man, whew. <sighs> you started praying, and uh, God sent me. It's hell out there. I had to fight through some, some uh, evil princes on the way here. I had to get Michael to come help me. But when you uttered your prayer, God sent me, and here I am. Can you let the thought of that whole thing... S- do, do you understand how... That, that's why... I, we're holy rebels at loose in the world saying never knows where the danger is going to come from. Because as soon as you, this isn't even meant to be about prayer, and it's not even in my notes, but the minute that you pray, the demonic spirits that we don't see are in an uproar. And the God of all creation is telling his servants to go and meet that need, not necessarily according to what I ask, thank God for that, but according to what I need. And there's a war in heaven every time you and I utter prayer. Why do you fall asleep when you're praying? Because it's a war out there, right? Why is it the hardest thing to do? Because of that. And so I want you to get this picture of this throne room as we unfold this book in the coming weeks because this is what it's doing. Now, let's get back to the book and keep reading. I don't mean to get distracted, but man, this stuff is good. So here it is. To John, to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness. The firstborn of the dead. And the ruler of the kings of the earth. Listen, he was a witness to all that this world was going to do. He knew it was going to destroy him. He is a witness like you and I are a witness. That word really, in a, in a sense, means martyr. That's what we are. He, he was a martyr to the truth. And they slain him. And so he was the firstborn of the dead. And because he died and was resurrected, that's why baptism is what it is. I, he was the firstborn. Understand, it didn't say he was just the born. He's the firstborn. That means there's more. You know who they are? You, me, and everybody else. He paved that way so that you and I could live again. That which was the, the, that died at, 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 uh, at the curse. Now when you and I believe in Christ and we are baptized, symbolically we die and then we come out of those waters and we're alive now we're the we're the we're the second and third born so to speak right and this is what he's saying and he says and he is the ruler of the kings of the earth president biden doesn't have the last say putin doesn't have the last say whatever king of, that you think of that's coming or going or whatever they they ain't what they said they, they can play king all they want to just like you, you, when you were the big sister, big brother of the house, and your mom and dad left, you could play big brother. You could play daddy all you wanted. But when daddy got home, <laughs> he was going to fix everything, right? And so this is it right here. Now, it says this, to him who loves us 
and released us. What did he release me from? Darkness, death, and lustful, uh, just selfishness. He, he released us from our sins by his blood. It's the precious blood of Christ that we don't talk about enough. But it is that crimson blood that is constantly flowing. You need to hear this. That you've seen those commercials where that guy's walking around and it's like rain everywhere he goes? You know, that, that's what this is only in reverse. Everywhere I go, the blood of Christ is constantly flowing over me. Just think about that. So I get into a conversation at work and I get in the flesh and I start yelling and I start going crazy. God doesn't see that. He doesn't see my sin because the blood of his, his son constantly cleanses me from all sin. He has released me from those things. We need to let these truths sink in here. He says to him who loved us and released us from our sins by his blood. And he made us into a kingdom. Come on. This is what we are. You, This is a little piece of a kingdom right here. There ain't that many of us in here today, right? But, but, but we're a part of the kingdom. And there are those who have come before us. And they're dead now, but they're a part of the kingdom too. But guess what? They're not dead. They're just sleeping. There's going to come a time when he puts his foot on that mount and it splits in two and that war happens and then there's the kingdom. The king is here and the kingdom is there and he will usher us into this kingdom. And so this is who we are and this is what he's letting us know. He made you and me into a kingdom. And then he says this, and priests to his God and Father. I, and I don't, this is the beauty of it. When I got adopted, and, I'm, and I move into the big house, God is my father. He's my Abba father. Now, it weeds me out sometimes when people, I hear people pray and they go, look, daddy, you know, daddy God. I'm like, I don't know. Just, I, I, I'm probably feeling more of myself. I'm just like, ah. but you know what? They're not wrong, right? It just, I'm just, I'm not, I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging. I'm just saying they're not wrong. I just see them differently. But he is that. And so I don't need a I don't need a go between. My kids don't need to make an appointment to come see me. My kids walk in this room, they have they have all they call me on the phone. I don't care if I'm in a meeting, I'm answering that phone call. Why? Because they're my kids. You don't need an you don't need somebody to speak before you to the king. Because we're priests already. He has made us that. I have access to the throne of God. We're, I know this doesn't sound like the book of the Revelation, but it is. Just trust me, we're getting there. He says, and he made us into a kingdom, priest to his God and Father. To him be the glory and the dominion forever. Right. To Christ is the glory and dominion. I don't know what we think of when we think of royalty and all that, because we didn't come from that kind of thing. But I'm telling you this, I, I can't imagine the pageantry that's going to take place when, when you and I get there. And, and it says, to him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Listen to this. This is good. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him, even the ones who killed him, they're going to see him. Yep. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. That means they will mourn the fact that it is, it is that blessedness of the, of the, of the uh, Beatitudes. Blessed are they who mourn. They're going to know their sinfulness at that point. The most proud among us. That's why it says, listen, and this is one of my favorite lines to give to people who discount things. I say, hey man, temporarily that's your option. You don't have to believe what I believe. But one day, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess yes. that he is Lord. And so that's what he says. And then he says this, I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Now, I thought we were going to get through this whole thing, but obviously we're not. So we're going to, we're going to call it quits here for today. But uh, man, how powerful is this? Listen, you get a blessing because we're reading this, because we're hearing it, and because we're going to attend to what he says to do in here, we're going to attend to it. This is the only book that that said. It's the only book that he says, and you don't add to it and you don't take away. Some people like to read that like it was of the whole scriptures, but it's not. It was this book, and it says this. Curses are going to come on you who add to it or take away from it. That's why I want to be real careful that I don't add to this thing something that doesn't say. Far too many of my peers do that. We're just going to look at it. All right? We're just going to see what it says just like we are here today. Lord bless you guys. Um, man, let's uh, sing our way out. It's a great song.
Uh, we're going to sing our way out of here, and then we're going to celebrate Lord's Supper.